like to welcome you to the wedding today. And on behalf of Julie and Travis, we're glad that you're here. And this will be a very special day for them. Julie and Travis, you now stand before family, friends, and God to pledge love and faithfulness to one another. All of us rejoice with you in this joyous occasion and pledge to you our prayer bill support. Yet, however much we support and encourage you, the faithfulness of keeping the found day to day is certainly and ultimately your responsibility. Allow me to offer the four words that will aid you in the task of your vow keeping. These four words are faith, hope, love, and commitment. Faith is the confidence one has in the other to be honest and truthful, understanding and compassionate, trusting and open. Faith is also that confidence the two of you can have in God to be present with you in all circumstances. Hope is the dream one has not for his or her own wishes and desires but for the fulfillment of the wishes and desires of the other. Hope is also the dream the two of you have that God's purposes will be done through you. Love is the security that arises out of the unconditional commitment one has to the other. Love is also the security that arises out of God's unconditional commitment to you. Commitment is what you two will do here today. This commitment you make to one another will be for the rest of your lives. These four words, faith, hope, love, and commitment, if practiced consistently, will keep and consummate the vows you, Julie and Travis, will now say to one another. But if you're able, let us stand at this time. And let us pray. Father, you have promised that your joy can be in us so that our joy can be complete. We come before you this day, brought here by this joyous intentions of Julie and Travis to become husband and wife. They come full of love. We ask that you will shape that love so that it grows not only inward, but also outward in compassion for those around them and the world as Christ has taught us. Bless us all with your presence in this time of joy. In the name of Jesus, amen, and please be seated. Marriage in the eyes of God is not a temporary arrangement to be entered into until something better comes along. It is a loving relationship in which you covenant with each other that you will rejoice in your love and search out the hidden blessings in your disagreements for as long as God gives you life. Travis, are you ready to enter into this marriage covenant with Julie? And if so, say, I am. Julie, are you ready to enter into this marriage covenant with Travis? And if so, say, I am. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her family and I. Our scripture reading today will be taken from 1 John chapter 3, verses 18 through 24. Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This then is how we know that we belong to the truth, and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from Him anything we ask, because we obey His commands and do what pleases Him. And this is His command, to believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as He commanded us. Those who obey His commands live in Him, and He in them. And this is how we know that He lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. When you love someone, you do not love them all the time in exactly the same way from moment to moment. It is impossible. 
And yet this is exactly what most of us demand. We have so little faith in the ebb and flow of life, of love, and of relationships. We leap at the flow of the tide in, in and resist and tear its ebb and flow out. We are afraid it will never return. But with commitment, love will always return. We insist on permanency, on duration, on continuity, when the only continuity possible in life, as in love, is in change and growth. The amount of work necessary to produce honey is staggering. It takes about 36 days, the entire working life for a bee, actually for 12 bees to make just one teaspoon of honey. As a result, the work habits of bees have become proverbial. Some people are described as busy as a bee, and that is supposed to be a good thing. Indeed, industry and thrift are necessary for the family economy. We need to be ready to work hard for ourselves and for each other, keeping in mind the goals of the family and of God's family as well. Our work and our wealth should benefit us and the work of the Lord. But take another lesson from the bee today. No other insect, insect has been studied as long or as hard because of the honey the hives produces. And bee experts were surprised to find that the idea that the bee labors unceasingly is just a myth. On occasion, each worker bee will simply stop working, find a place among the comb of the hive, and simply rest. The bee does nothing, but that nothing turns out to be even more productive, for it is recharged, refreshed, and renewed for